Greetings, Community Church of Mount Pleasant, and those of you who are our friends and who join us and listen to us and keep up with us and communicate with us. Whether or not you're a member of the Community Church of Mount Pleasant, you are family. Consider yourself adopted. Uh, I'm just glad to be able to come visit with you on this hump day. They call it hump day. Uh, middle of the week, and, and I love the opportunity we have to come and, and visit with you. Come into your office or your home or wherever it is that you are, and you get to, to watch the video. And, and I'm thankful to be able to visit with you, and I'm just excited about today. It was a, a little chilly this morning, but man, it's going to warm up today and be beautiful, and the sun's going to shine. And uh, I, I got up and looked at my calendar. Can you believe today is February 1st? I can't believe it. Where did January go? Uh, I guess they say time flies when you're having fun, so we must have been really having fun in January. And we were. Uh, January was an incredible month for our church. Um, we closed on our 25 acres of land, which will become and is becoming our new home. Uh, just a miracle. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, our series in January at church and our Bible studies has been uh, the miracles of Christ. And so God has shown us miracles in January of 2017. Uh, and that's what God does. We, we pray and seek Him and, and desire with all our heart to please Him. And uh, God does His part. He always does. And so thank you for joining me today. Here I'm here in the office out here in Mount Pleasant at the farm. And uh, I'm just thankful to be able to come to you. Let me, let me update you on a couple things. Sunday was just another great day. It was an amazing attendance that we had Sunday morning. Probably the highest attendance since we've been meeting at the elementary school in Mount Pleasant. Uh, and just uh, amazing children's uh, attendance as well. And it was just a great day. Our worship was phenomenal. And uh, we're just so thankful for, for everyone that participates. And, and we want our services to be particip participating. We want you to participate in our service. Don't just come and watch and listen. We want you to be a part of our services, and Sunday was another great day, and and uh, so we're excited about the future. We're excited about this month. Uh, we have two more Sundays that we will uh, include in our Miracle Series, and uh, this will be four and five, and this Sunday I have a surprise for you. I really don't want you to miss this Sunday. We have uh, Miracle Number Four. I'm not going to tell you what it is today. I, I'm just going to, you just need to come. You need to come and see the miracle. Come and see the miracle uh, this Sunday. This will be our number four in our series. And then uh, we'll close that out next Sunday, uh, January or February 12th. And that will wrap up our series. And then we're going to move into kind of a missions emphasis. And I have some neat things coming up. But uh, this weekend is our men's conference. We're going to go to uh, load up Friday morning. And some of the men will work half a day and drive down together. We'll carpool and down to Woodstock, Georgia. And we'll go have a steak dinner. Uh, at the First Baptist Church of Woodstock Friday night, and it, it'll be awesome. We've been there before. It's an amazing steak dinner. It's wonderful. It's kind of a guy's thing. Uh, and, and then we'll have our first session Friday night, and then two sessions on Saturday morning, and we'll end up about noon on Saturday and head back, get ready for Sunday. But, uh, boy, we got a great number of guys going down, and the conference is called Battle Ready. And it's for the warriors, the men in our church who have committed to be warriors for God. And they're going to be inspired. It's going to be a great weekend. Also, uh, I have one real special announcement that I want to let you know about. And I want you to plan to attend. Uh, we are planning a Valentine's party dinner. Um, and, and it's, I don't know, maybe kind of a banquet. But it's more dinner. And it, it's just really a party. When we get together, it's a party. And, and uh, we'll have pictures. And, and there will be, a, I believe, a... A photo center there where you can get your pictures made and and uh, so you may want to dress up nice and or casual whatever you want to do uh, we were going to do it here at the farm uh, that was the plan but Sunday the first day we announced it we had over a hundred people sign up so we're, we've already outgrown that venue so we have a new venue and I'm very excited about our new venue and it is going to be held at the coach house right here in Mount Pleasant. Actually, if you go down Dutch Road and get on 73, and you go down a mile or two, seven, well, actually up 73, and turn right on Lambert Road, 
you'll drive to the coach house. It is a wedding uh, festivities uh, venue and uh, we are going to have that facility for Friday night, February 10. And we're going to have a Valentine's party and I want you to come. Um, don't have to be a couple. Don't have to be an adult. Uh, it's, I believe, $12 for adults, $6 for children. Bring your whole family or make it a date. Now, guys, I'm trying to help you here. You, you know you got to do something for Valentine's Day. So I'm, I'm taking the, the pressure off. Just come to our church Valentine's party on February 10th at the Coach House. That's all you got to do. Just come. Just be there, and you will have done your duty. Now, you need to do all your other stuff that you do, flowers, candy, whatever. But I'm helping you out here, man. You don't have to find a place to do and or a place to go. We're helping you out with that. But it's going to be a fantastic time. I'm very excited about it. February 10th. Put it on your calendar. Maybe this Sunday you can sign up at church. We'll try to get a, a, a final count. And, uh, man, it's already overwhelmed with the uh, response. And I, I, I shouldn't be surprised because our church, that's how they do. We like to party. We like to have a good time. This weekend is Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, the Falcons and the Patriots. I'm not, probably not two of my favorite teams. But I'll enjoy the game. It should be a good one. But we have some Super Bowl parties. Our youth group has a Super Bowl party at the Cooper's house. At six, I believe. And then uh, for prayer and planning... <laughs> This Sunday night, prayer and planning will meet at the barn, okay? And so, just one that's a little bit of a change, and then our regular worship team will meet at their regular times and locations, and it's just going to be a fun Sunday. Uh, don't miss it. So, now, let me, let me do, I want to I take a little bit of, maybe a couple weeks here, I want to talk about miracles, because that's kind of what we've been talking about on Sunday morning, and what I want to do is highlight a couple miracles from the scriptures, and, and I want to give you a spe some specific verses that, that talk about the miracles of God. And uh, there, there are many, many miracles that we see in the scriptures, and, and I think it's neat for us to study these miracles, and, and uh, there's lots of purposes for miracles. One of the reasons God does miracles is to reveal to everybody else that He is God. And when Jesus did miracles, he revealed to people he wasn't just a great teacher. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I'm not a great teacher of the Bible. I can't do miracles. I mean, I can, I can, I'm a human. Well, Jesus was a human, but he also was God. And he could heal people. He could cast out demons. And he could, he could do amazing things because he was God. And, and he wanted to show us. And he also wanted to encourage his followers in their faith. And, and when he showed them, he, he, he spoke, and they followed him, and they believed him, they had faith in him, but he also showed them, and they're like, that's, that's Jesus, that's the one I follow, that's my Lord, that's my Savior. And so, Jesus did miracles, and then God did some miracles in the Old Testament. So let me, let me show you just a couple here. The first one is uh, found in Genesis uh, chapters 12 up through the following chapters in Genesis about Abraham and Sarah. Now, Abraham and Sarah were older. They were seniors, way seniors, and, and they were beyond the time that for them that physically it would be able for them to have children. But, guess what? God made a promise, and God delivered, and God gave them a child, and Sarah became pregnant. And, and this was clearly a miracle. Let me read you a verse, Matthew 19, 26, which kind of relates to that. Matthew 19, 26 says this, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible. And you know what's coming up next. But with God, all things are possible. There are certain things in the physical realm that we look at and we say, Pastor, that's not going to happen. That's impossible. That's, that's, that is, it, with men, this looks like it looks to be an impossibility. But with God, all things are possible. Or with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. So, I would like for you to be encouraged today because you may be facing a challenge. And, and you may be facing a circumstance. And to you, it may seem impossible. It may seem there's no way, physically speaking, there's no way this can happen or might not happen. And I want you to know that with men, you're right. It, it seems impossible, but with God, 
all things are possible. Let me show you another miracle. This one's over in the book of Exodus. And uh, I, I want to show you that this, this is, uh, there's a whole nation of people. There's a group of people. And they were, they're, they were traveling and their backs were against the wall. And they were facing a, an impossible situation. And the Lord opened up the Red Sea for these people his followers, his children, and they were able to pass through miraculously and be safe and, and be delivered. And, and so this is found in Exodus chapters 12, 13, and 14. It's when the nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea and God parted the waters. And here's a verse for you in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. He is thy praise and he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Uh, children of Israel, you, you belong to God. God is your Father. And your God has done this amazing thing that is supernatural. There's not a person that could have done this. This can't be manipulated or contrived. God, your God, your Father, has stepped in and he says that he had done these great things and terrible things, amazing things, awesome things for you. You know, it's pretty awesome when God takes a, a body of water and just splits it and says, go ahead and walk across. That's a miracle. And, and God does that. He did that. Many, many, many people saw it, and he's still doing miracles today. Let me give you one more. Um, let, me, let me look at, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 17, there's a miracle because... There's this place and this family and this person who was in great need and they were in poverty and, and they needed uh, provision. And so God gave them a jar of flour and a jug of oil so that they could have nourishment, so that they could have food, so that she could cook and provide for them in God's man. And so uh, she, she ran out of food but yet somehow she went and there was more because God gave them more of what was in the flour and the oil. 1 Kings chapter 17. And there's a verse in Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27. And, and I'll close with this one today. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 says this, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? Now there was a specific instance where God came and provided nourishment and food for this family. And it was a miracle because there was nothing there. The jug and the pot were empty. And God continued to provide food for them. Let me, let me give you this verse today. Is there anything too hard for me? Now, for me to say that to you, as your pastor, as your friend, as a human being, for me to say, is there anything to... Yeah, there are things that are to... Listen, there are a lot of things I cannot do for you. I can pray for you. I can encourage you. We can talk. But there are certain things I can't do for you. But God says, is there anything that's too hard for me? So, perhaps... This week, maybe today, you're facing a circumstance. Maybe it's work-related. Maybe it's family-related. Maybe it's regarding a friend or some type of a relationship. God, and, and you're, you're at the end. Your barrel is empty. You have no food left. Maybe the bank account, there's nothing left. I want to tell you something based on this verse out of Jeremiah chapter 2, 32, verse 27. Is there anything too hard for your God? I would give you an answer to that. No. There's nothing. There's nothing that your God can't handle. Can I encourage you with that thought today? Can, can you go out and face life today with a little bit more hope, knowing, you know what, I'm at the end. I've, I, there's nothing, I can't fix this. But your Father, your God, there's nothing too hard for Him. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for visiting with us today. And I appreciate so much the, the opportunity to come visit you. I would encourage you to try to come visit us on Sunday. We have an amazing miracle that you're going to see firsthand Sunday. I'm praying for you. I pray you have a great week. And God bless you. Thanks for joining us today.